can in front of the camera. Yeah. So that puts an added pressure. Yeah. Let me ask you what, um, you made your film debut, I know, in, um, in Myra, Breckenridge. Mm -hmm. I uh, like to forget that. <laughs> <laughs> I still think that film was maybe a couple of years ahead of its time. Oh, I think so. Uh, perhaps 20 years ago. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I talk to people occasionally who, who liked the film, and, but there's, a, there's that very small percentage of people that, in other words, like cult films, mm -hmm. films that are ahead of their time, yeah. things that, that are dealing with things that are not as current, in other words, that are a couple of years ahead, like yeah. you said. In 1970, 29-year-old Raquel Welch had high hopes when she was cast in the controversial film Myra Breckenridge, a savage parody of Hollywood based on Gore Vidal's best-selling novel. The book that couldn't be written is now the motion picture that couldn't be made. Myra Breckenridge. Raquel took on the risky role of a transsexual out to conquer Hollywood. Myra Breckenridge is a dish. And don't you ever forget it. The film starred Rex Reed, John Huston, and the legendary Mae West. I'll be right with you, boys. Get your resumes out. Mae West was 72 years old at the time. I had an audience arranged for me in her apartment. I kneel practically at her feet and I say, Oh, Miss West, it's so great to meet you. You're a living legend and I read all about you. And she said, Oh, yeah. Well, what did you say your name was? Soon the tension between the two sex symbols became as notorious as the film itself. Mae West immediately said, oh, she's a sweet little thing, you know, but uh, no real woman would play this part. Well, it was war from that minute on. Sit down, honey. You sound like a good agent. You see, Miss Van Allen, Uncle Buck and I deal in myths, and movie stars are like gods and goddesses. When one fades, another promptly takes its place, because the human race requires that the pantheon always be filled. And you and I must seek out the glittering few that are the new stars of our race, reborn! That is the damnedest thing I ever heard. Although some praised Myra Breckenridge for being ahead of its time, it was a critical and box office disaster, and Welch was devastated by the backlash. And then it happened. After being away from films for over 27 years, at the age of 77, she was asked to play the part of big-time casting director Letitia Van Allen in the film version of the Gore Vidal book, Myra Breckenridge. May had a lavish production number and received $350,000 for her appearance. She also got to act with the then reigning sex symbol, Raquel Welch. You have all the kinky angles that are in right now. I mean, have you any that I don't know about? <laughs> oh, Leticia, what about studs? They don't call you the queen of the casting couch for nothing. Raquel Welch and uh, May certainly did not get on. Uh, and that, to me, was to be expected. I mean, when you know that May doesn't enjoy being in competition with other women, it would be very difficult for her to be in a movie with the so-called sex symbol of the 70s when she still considered her to be um, the sex symbol of life. <laughs> Myra Breckenridge was a colossal failure, but May received good notices. Many thought she was dead and were surprised at her vitality. May was 77 years old and she wasn't even thinking about retirement. And then in 1970, after almost three decades off the screen, Hollywood finally came courting again. The book that couldn't be written is now the motion picture that couldn't be made. Myra Breckenridge. Mae West was excited to be making a, quote, comeback. Uh, there's no doubt that the idea of making a movie really excited her. I'm not sure Myra Breckenridge would be her dream picture. What about studs? They don't call you the queen of the casting couch for nothing. She felt that Raquel Welch had stolen her complete persona of sexiness from Mae West. And she, saw, she had a kind of paranoia. She thought that everybody had stolen from her. Despite her insecurities about playing second fiddle to Raquel Welch, Mae was excited to be back. 
The problem was she was in the late 70s, an age where she could look back nostalgically on her sexy past. Instead, May was trying desperately to relive it, even eight years after Myra Breckenridge, when May was offered what would be her final role. Functions that they will be photographed together. Farrah's agent, Dick Clayton, was able to get her cast in the 1970 dark comedy, Myra Breckenridge. The film was a miserable experience for 23-year-old Farrah. If only you were a man. I remember talking to her on what a painful ordeal it was to make that movie. She, how many times they demanded that she change her hair color, you know, one hour after the next, going to the next bottle of hair color. Um, and she really had not much control over that because she was new and didn't know that. After filming wrapped on Myra Breckenridge, Farrah's hair was in bad shape. She turned to stylist Hugh York for help. Let me ask you what, um, you made your film debut, I know, in, um, in Myra Breckenridge. Mm -hmm. I like uh, to forget that. <laughs> <laughs> I still think that film was maybe a couple of years ahead of its time. Oh, I, I think so. Uh, that's 20 years ago. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I talk to people occasionally who, who liked the film, and, but there's, a, there's that very small percentage of people that, in other words, like cult films, mm -hmm. films that are ahead of their time, yeah. things that that are dealing with things that are not as current, in other words, that are a couple of years ahead, like yeah. you said. Um.